Good morning, everyone. So I'm editing a video that I took on um, Friday morning, and I realize now just how sick I was on Friday. Um, just a few short hours after I finished filming that video, I ended up in the emergency room, and then early the next morning had emergency um, surgery to remove my gallbladder. So I debated refilming that footage, but um, just between time constraints, availability of supplies that I have, and just my overall energy level, I've decided to go forth and um, use the footage that I've already filmed. Um, I have done some editing just because there's spots where I have long pauses. And now I look back and I realize it's because I was really, really sick. So, it hurts a lot. Um, so, I'm going to get this uh, video finished up. It is uploaded. I am so far behind. Um, as always, I hope everyone is being safe, taking precautions, staying indoors. I do have another video that I will be filming today with the help of my kids. I'm still just kind of puttering around. I'm not feeling 100%. Um, probably won't for, for a few more days. You know, I tend to want to push myself a little bit. Um, as you can hear, it's raining here in Missouri. So thanks everyone. Enjoy today's video. Happy Friday and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to talk about dry canning. Dry canning is a process where you take dried pantry goods like rice, flour, oats, beans, and you put it into a canning jar and heat it up in the oven at a certain temperature for a certain amount of time to not only preserve it in those canning jars because you're creating a vacuum seal so that it protects it from moisture and outside contaminants, but you're also killing contaminants that are already within the foods um, when they come from the factories in order to you know help preserve your investment and um, also I just don't like to see food wasted let's get started on um, dry canning some stuff that I already had here at the house or things that I did purchase as well just to um, have a little bit extra in my cupboard doing is turning my oven on to 200 now normally you would have it between 2 and 225 no hotter than that because we do not want to risk cooking the food or um, actually breaking the canning jar. I'm going to start by removing my upper rack and make sure that my other rack is as low as it can go in my oven. I have it turned on to 200. I'm going to be preheating it while I am um, preparing the jars. And then I'm also going to be putting the jars on um, cookie sheets just so that if a jar does happen to burst in the oven, it is on a cookie sheet and a little bit easier for me to clean up. I love um, the half gallon. My quart size actually work really, really well because it's a manageable size for um, you know a single person, a family of two, four, six. You know, it might be the size that you need for a single meal or it might be the size that you need for the week. You can get these in um, like, uh, canning jar kits. You can buy them by themselves. They come in plastic, stainless steel. I've had this one for about 12 years, which is amazing. I've had stainless steel ones and they always seem to disappear. And I'm not sure why that is, but this single blue plastic one has just stuck around. So um, now that I said that, knock on wood, some kid's gonna walk off with it. And I'm just going to pour until it comes up to the bottom of my funnel. Kind of stamp it down. Pack it in a little bit. And unlike with pressure canning, you can bring your food all the way up to the rim. So you're not going to tighten it down all the way. You're going to do approximately one, two, 
three, two and a half or three turns. And then you can put it on your cookie sheet. And then repeat. Next I'm going to do pasta. And I'm going to do pasta in the larger jars as well. Um, just because usually one of these will make three meals for my household. So once I open it up, it'll usually be gone um, within that week. The other thing is save your boxes that your canning jars come in. Because once your canning jars come back out, if you don't have a pantry space to slide them up onto shelves, you put them in these boxes and then you can put them on your plastic shelves, you're not in your garage or your, your uh, you know your wherever it is that you store your food then it keep helps to keep it all organized and pop it in so i break my boxes down and remove the um, plastic insert um for easier recycling One half gallon jar um, takes almost a 16 ounce box of the uh, great value um, pasta. I'm going to do elbow macaroni. which and last but not least I have rotini which we like to use in um, like vegetable soup or uh, making both hot and cold pasta salad usually snip off a quarter of the bag to keep it neat and I pour it in and it looks like one bag basically fills up one jar and I like the wide mouth jars so you'll notice that um, most of the jars that I get I try and have the wide mouth on them if possible it's just my preference One more on. So they uh, they've been in there for about forty minutes. So um, I'd recommend thirty to sixty minutes. Um, They've been a little bit longer than the, the low end of that. I'm gonna take them out one jar at a time. I'm not gonna try and lift out that cookie sheet um, hot and full of hot jars. So I'm gonna lift them out one at a time. And um, this is one of the beauties of having stainless steel counters is I can just set them right on the countertop and allow them to um, start cooling. Now, while they're still hot, I will go through and start closing all of the lids tightly and then we'll listen for those lovely pops. Now I'm gonna use my pot holder and I'm gonna grab the top of the jar, not just the metal lid, I'm actually grabbing down onto the jar itself. A second pot holder. Now I touch things all the time 
which I probably shouldn't, and I don't recommend. Well, I just cannot get that back up there. Holy cow! What the heck? Okay, so I touch hot things all the time with my bare hands, but I don't recommend that to you. So I'm gonna take a second pot holder. I'm going to grab a hold of the jar where I can hold it securely. I'm gonna have my first pot holder, and I'm going to, together, turn until that lid is secure. And then I'm just gonna set it out there. So hold, turn. I recommend that you leave these um, in a spot where you can watch them and listen to them until all of them have popped and then at that point store them in your boxes or put them on your pantry or wherever it is that you put your uh, your long-term storage and at that point once they're all cooled off I also will go ahead and examine my jars make sure that nothing cracked you know I'll make sure that everything is sealed. I go around and I check all the tops. So that brings up another question that you guys may have. And that would be, how long can I store these like this? Well, there are some people that say that you can store these for about 30 years. And I think that is absolutely ridiculous. Just because why in the heck would you store food for 30 years? If you have it, you should be eating. And so um, that brings me to another topic of food pantry rotation. So anyone that is um, prepping, doing food storage, doing a um, Mormon food pantry, um, you know, just food preparation during these uncertain times, you have to remember to rotate your food. So I will go through and on the tops of all of these, I will either write with my Sharpie or I make labels and I put them on and I put the date that I canned them. Um, so then I can make sure that I rotate those forward. So obviously I use everything, you know, I go by date and I use the um, oldest stuff first. And when I do new food like this, this is not going to go in the front of my pantry or the front of, front of my food storage. It goes to the back of the food storage so that other stuff gets used first. So really and truly, if I was doing like, um, you know, the Mormon church says, which is to have two years worth of food prep, this method right here would be just fine for that two years. And presumably in two years time, we will have figured out or you would have figured out or, you know, someone would have come up with um, even going back to the ideas of our ancestors, you know, we'll, we'll be in a position where we are growing, preparing and storing fresh food. And so that food pantry of, you know, six months or one year or two years, it is just supposed to get us through that first season or second season so that we can then be self-sufficient to move on. So, um, while some people may want to store things for 30 years, if it really does store that long, I can't say. So, um, if you are dry canning like this and you are doing food prep, um, currently just because of everything going on in the country or um, you know you're just looking at more sustainable ways of life plan on anything that you put up that you're going to put it together for um, for you know the possibility of a two-year food storage so there are nine half gallon jars of um, 
pasta and rice, three of kidney beans, and two of wild rice. And that was done with the dry can method. And while I've been doing this video, I've already heard, um, and I'm trying to see, yep. See? See, that's what you want to look for, is the lid does not press down. You know, it doesn't have any give, and it has that indent in it. Oops, sorry, I went too far. The indent, that one has the indent where they've popped. But see that one? It is not. And if I push on it with my finger, see how it makes that noise? And then it will pop back up. So what you're waiting for is to hear those pops from all your jars as they pressure, you know, they uh, seal. Thank you all for joining me today. I hope everyone has learned something about dry canning and you all feel comfortable in putting up your food for long-term storage. One more thing before I let you all go. So in recent weeks, I know a lot of you have gone out and purchased dried goods and canned goods and, you know, what we would normally call famine food in preparation for the unknown that's coming um, in the next month, two months, sounds like up to 18 months with the coronavirus. Now, if you find yourself in a position where you no longer need that food or you're not going to eat it, don't let it go to waste. All of the food banks in your area are still going to need donations. Their need is larger now than it has ever been before. So um, once again, don't let that food go to waste. Don't let it expire on your shelf. If you're not going to use it or if you find that you no longer have uh, an immediate need for it, store it properly so that you can eat it or donate it. Have a wonderful Friday. Thanks for hanging out with me.